Oh yeah, it's a different kind of video today. What's going on everybody? I hope everybody's having a great day so far. So today, we're actually going to talk about the Don Elias Dumbao. Oh yeah, he had a Dumbao. Crazy. So to all the new subscribers, Welcome to Percussion Life, my name is Eric Perez. Some of you already know that by now, but just had to welcome you to the channel, and I do hope that you enjoy these videos. And if you haven't subscribed already, just hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button, find out whenever I upload. And yes, I normally upload every Monday and Thursday, and it's normally things that you request. And to all my day ones, man, thank you so much for all the love, all the support, all the comments, sharing my videos. Also, all my day twos or day three and a halfs. You know who I'm talking about. You know who, it's you, yeah, I'm talking about you. Honestly, just to clarify, from the first day that you subscribe to this channel, you become a day one. Day one, you gotta look. And yes, this looks kind of familiar. If you recognize this couch, then you already know. But for these type of videos, since I do them about once a month, I actually just wanted to get comfortable with it and then later on do the demonstration of their actual pattern or groove or tumbao. But yes, you gotta get comfortable when talking about great percussionists. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. So yeah, if you don't wanna listen to all this story, just hit that timestamp below and you'll be directed to the demonstration portion of this video. So today we're talking about Sir Charles Donald Elias. Don Elias, man, one of the greatest, greatest percussionists to have ever lived, man. And it's surprising that not a lot of people know about this legend. It's crazy how groovy he was. It's crazy how his unique style kind of captivated so many people for so long. And it's just crazy that so many people don't know who this guy is. It's crazy. His style was so unique. His grooves and his patterns were like, his own soul telling a story. It's crazy. If you don't know who Don Elias is, he's actually played with people like Nina Simone, Herbie Hancock, Weather Report, Jacko, Tony Williams, and of course, Miles Davis, man. Miles Davis. Miles Davis, unbelievable. And of course, he's been a part of over 100 recordings, man. This guy is legendary. He doesn't just play congas or just regular auxiliary percussion. He can also play kit drum and was actually a kit drum player in one of Miles Davis's recordings. It's crazy. But yes, his style is so unique. And if you notice how he plays, sometimes I don't know if he's doing just a regular open or hitting it with his finger, man. But I'm telling you, his little finger hits, Things were like crazy opens, man. His style was so different and it's so unique. And I'm telling you, he was one of like the coolest dudes ever. With his afro out and just chill demeanor. It looked like he just always had control of everything that he was doing every time he's played on the scene. It's crazy. And what's crazy about it is that he was playing percussion like since high school, but when he got to college, he was actually studying medicine. So he was going towards that path. And within college, he was getting these gigs on the side to play percussion. And of course, this guy made a career change. That's crazy. That's how you know, like music is so powerful that you could be studying medicine and then out of the blue, something like percussion captivates your life and you decide to want to do that. It's crazy. And to be real with you, he has this solo, which in two occasions, he actually does two crazy tumbao variations, but I'm only gonna talk about one, but it's crazy. But that solo, and I'll link that solo, it's probably my top five, one of my top five solos of all time. What Don Elias was doing in the 1970s, I, I don't know how people don't know about this guy. It like surprises me because he was doing certain things, man, that causes me to break it down so slowly. And it's like, what were you thinking? It's unbelievable, the feel, the presence, the control that he had on top of his set. I think he has a video with like, I think it's Drummer World or yeah, Drum World, but it was literally him playing all different sorts of percussion with djembe, with the marimba, with gongas, with little just 
accent things over here telling a story man this guy every time he played especially with jacko when it was just a bass player and him he always had to tell a story when he was playing probably one of the best storytellers ever to play percussion i don't know what it was but he was able to transmit so much energy at a time where of course you know I, I love the 70s i love that era and it's crazy that he was able to kind of like stand out from the rest and be a little bit unique and be a little bit different you know we're talking about an era where you got your ralph mcdonald's and your big blacks so you have so much variety and so many different styles and flavors in a time where music was just crazy Unfortunately, Don Elias passed away in March 2006 at the age of 66. It's kind of crazy, man, you know, seeing these legends die so young. To me, I think that's still young. I think he had so much left. I believe that at the time that he passed away, he was working on a project. So that's kind of crazy that at the age of 66, this guy was still active. This guy was still legendary. This guy was still making moves and still making music. And it's crazy that you know, that's just left there. We don't know what's gonna happen, but I encourage you to look up Don Elias and look all his different styles and look at how much he has influenced, not just my playing, but you'll start to notice a lot of different styles actually was birthed from his style of playing. So y'all already know, man to Don Elias. But yeah, while I uh, go over there and set up for the demonstration portion of this video, this is the tumbao I wanna show you guys today. That is some craziness right there. Let's slow it down just a little bit, just to see how crazy this is. And this is in the 70s, y'all, man. Don Elias was a bad man. Say it with me, man. He's, He's a, a bad, bad man. man. Like for real, for real, I just wanted him to keep on doing that, man. That pattern was so tough, beautiful, my goodness. But yeah, let me uh, show you what he's doing. I'm gonna play it slowly and then progressively speed up, but I cannot get on that level. I'm trying to tell you, that was some craziness. That is some craziness right there. Wow. And yeah, I switched back to this steer and my goodness, I missed it. But don't worry, I'll go back to synthetic when I need it. But for right now, let's just keep on these steers. Let's just keep on the steers. <laughs> but yeah, let me show you what Don Elias is doing. And if you notice my setup, I'm trying to set up kind of like how he did. I think it makes this pattern a lot easier to navigate, a lot, I would say more fluid. You kind of flow a lot easier when trying out this pattern. And it's crazy because what this actually does, it really works out your dominant hand. And you would think that of all things, you don't need to work out your dominant hand, but it does. I'm trying to tell you, this thing does. And in this case, I'm actually playing on a quinto. Normally, I don't play on a quinto, but I'm trying to emulate somewhat close the sound that Don Elias was doing. Because if you notice in the video, he really cranked up his main drum, then his mid was kind of low, and then his lowest was really low. So I'm trying to come as close as possible to that. I know it's not even close because those congas sound amazing, especially with those hands my goodness later on in the video i'm going to count it for you so you could you know find yourself easier when trying to apply it in a song i'm just gonna break down first the best way i kind of try to figure this out and learn it on my own and then you know i had to figure out you know the flavors and all this things and craziness that don elias was doing that guy is Wow, unbelievable. So I start this pattern with like a palm slap in the middle of the drum with my dominant hand. And then with my non-dominant hand, I do a close slap on the main drum. So to put that together.
after doing that close slap with your non-dominant hand, with your dominant hand, you're going to do an open on your mid-tone drum. So on the mid-tone drum with your dominant hand, you're going to do one open. After doing that open with your dominant hand on the mid drum, again with your dominant hand, you're gonna do an open on your main drum, and then you're gonna do an open with your non-dominant hand on the main drum. So it's gonna sound like this. So to put everything together up to this point, it's gonna sound like this. After doing that open with your non-dominant hand, now with your dominant hand, you're going to do an open again on your mid drum, and then you're going to do a close slap with your non-dominant hand on your main drum. Your non-dominant hand never leaves the main drum, just keep that in mind. But then after doing that close slap, you're gonna do another open with your dominant hand on your mid drum. So it's gonna sound like this. To put everything together to this point, it's gonna sound like this. Starting to get a nice little feel going. Now here comes what I would say the tricky part or the tongue twister. After doing that open on your mid drum, you're going to do a close slap with your non-dominant hand again on your main drum, and then you're going to do an open on your lowest drum with your dominant hand. So it's gonna sound like this. Not to put everything together so you can kind of get the feel, it's gonna sound like this. And again, this is the tricky part. So after doing that open with your dominant hand, with your non-dominant hand, what you're going to do is, you're going to do like a palm slap, but it's like near the edge of the drum head, not on the rim, but on the edge of the drum head. So that palm isn't really that pronounced, but it's there. So it's gonna sound like this. And after doing that close slap with your non-dominant hand, with your dominant hand, you're going to do an open again on the mid drum. And then with your non-dominant hand, you're gonna finish everything off with a close slap on your main drum. So it's gonna sound like this. And that close slap is what really helps that first close slap that you did with your dominant hand sound a lot more pronounced. Because after doing that close slap, you're gonna do that close slap with your dominant hand. So it's gonna give this type of effect. Let me just show you. So let me put everything together, finishing off with the close slap of the beginning part, just so you could see how like the ending really is supposed to sound like. But yeah, let me show you, let me show you. Let me just put everything together. Crazy when you see it extra, extra slow. Now to play the whole thing through, it's gonna sound like this. Great workout, my goodness. Now to count it and play it very slowly, it's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, three. My 
my goodness, Don Elias is a true, 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 true legend. You gotta love it. All right, y'all, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's kind of crazy. I know it's different. I know it's out of the ordinary, but I just had to, had to do it. That was one of my favorite solos that Don Elias has ever done and one of my favorite solos of all time. So the fact that I was able to just grab a glimpse, maybe two seconds or four seconds of what he was saying and show and expose just the type of brain this guy had to pull something as crazy as this off in the middle of a solo of all places. It's such an honor and a privilege to be able to just break this complex pattern, complex tumbao, complex groove, whatever you want to call it. It's just crazy to be able to have that as part of history and be able to break it down for you guys. And you, hopefully you guys use it in a gig or use it in a recording or use it in a pattern or use it in the middle of a song, whatever floats your boat. I hope it becomes a great benefit from you. But of course, we got to give thanks to Don Elias. But all right, y'all, y'all already know what to do. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day.